They have so many old friends, George. I mean, it's an intimate gathering, and yet everybody here seems to know you for a minimum of 20 or 30 years. I'm thinking about the time in Israel in the 1970s when Michael Phillips and I in our business uh, were in Israel and get to meet you for the first time. And I'm at the Dead Sea, and it was the 70s, and I was taking chocolate mescaline and, uh, <laughs> with a girl slightly of age, uh, a young lady, and uh, you didn't blink. Obviously, you were an astute businessman, and yet, yet I was very impressed by your ability that, to accept whatever was in your hands. And as the years we got to know each other, and I find out you know people like Rick Reese, who I've known 60 years, Peter Cohen, who I knew all these years, six degrees of separation, that there was a reason why so many people you know, were attracted to you. And a lot of it has to do, George, with you have an incredible curiosity. I'm fascinated by your ability to obviously deal with business, to grow how close you were to your mom and everything else in the stockbroking company when you first started, and to see how you extended yourself into this future. And I think a lot of people have mentioned this tonight, how you've affected another generation. In my situation, with my children in an interfaith family, who you've supported so much and given so much direction to my son Dylan, in your archaeology things and realizing that these are things that will help him understand. And your digitalization world is really, really impressive. And where most of us are kind of locked into our own format, you continue to grow. You continue to grow. And I think that's the part of, that I'm most impressed with you, George. A couple of other things I can't talk about tonight <laughs> that I think you're very impressive. But... Uh, <laughs> But um, happy birthday, and it must be wonderful to have so many old friends that love you so much. Happy birthday, George.